outside, but there is not much room for everyone. So, uh, my name is Aris. I am going to present to you uh, a few things about SSH and TLS SSL, and uh, more in particular over uh, SSH. So, uh, library to access uh, the SSH protocol. So, a few words about myself. Okay, I'm a bit, you can see it. I'm a security and a cryptography enthusiast. Uh, I came into just as well. I work for the Libre SSH project. Uh, I work at Belnet, uh, which is a research uh, and a research and education uh, pr uh, internet provider. So we provide internet connectivity to research network, and in particular to for them this year. Uh, there is uh, a job uh, booth, so if you have a minute, just go there. That's for my address. I can. Okay, I'm very good, and I like it. Okay. Just tell me where you want the next slide. Sorry? Just tell me where you want the next slide. Okay. Yes, but my, my whole uh, slides are interactive, so I will do it. Okay. So, uh, I, I'll start by uh, speaking a little about the differences between SSL and SSH, because I'm not sure it's clear for everyone, and it's a good uh, start to decide if you are going to use SSL or SSH for your next uh, cryptographic application. And then I will talk a little about uh, our project, how it works, and uh, how to use it uh, in start. So you can uh, start coding your, your own SSH client uh, when going outside of this field. <coughs> so, uh, you know SSL, you know TLS. Um, how many people here know the difference be between uh, SSL and TLS? <coughs> In fact, there is almost no difference. Yes, because uh, starting from 3.1, SSL is the same as TLS 1.1, but I think it's evolved since then. OK, there is SSH, SSH1 which is almost a uh, uh, legacy. It's, uh, it has plenty of hole inside it, so nobody uses it anymore. Maybe in some uh, old uh, Cisco routers. And SSH2, I imagine most of you uh, already use uh, SSH. <coughs> so, what's SSL and TLS? It's the, the name is Secure Circuit Layer Transport Layer Security. So the idea is really that it's a secure transport. The goal is to, to transport uh, data from A from B to B in a secure fashion. So it was developed by Netscape. I think the version one was broken uh, during the presentation. Uh, <laughs> yes. But uh, they came with the, the version two uh, quite quickly. Uh, okay, it's very really, uh, used for uh, HTTPS, FTPS, I think you, you know it. Uh, something that's interesting is that uh, the security model of uh, ECSL and uh, TLS is based on X5 on a certificate. Uh, so that certificate you, you buy uh, had some uh, CDA providers for a lot of money, generally. And they uh, say you are to be trusted because you gave them money and a proof that you are who you are. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> there are a lot of implementations, so the, the best known are PenSSL, uh, new TLS, and, uh, if you are using Firefox, you are using NSS. Uh, there, there will be uh, talk about uh, the SSL as well. And I think Windows has its own embedded uh, implementation. Uh, I think a complete list would, be, would include uh, 30 or 40 libraries. So it's very well used. Okay, what about SS SSH? It's a secure shell. So the primary uh, use of uh, SSH was to provide an interactive shell to uh, a server. Uh, the goal was to replace uh, Telnet, in fact. 
That's what's in in secure by the time. Okay, a lot of, yes, it, the first version was SSH, SSH1, which was almost uh, free software. Uh, the open SSH team uh, take, took the, the code when it was still free and have made the great uh, open SSH project. So it's defined in RFCs. <laughs> it's not, it's uh, recent, uh, quite recent, I think it's, it has been done in, uh, in one or two years ago. So uh, some of the features of, of SSH that help grow the general scope of uh, SSL are that, uh, well, a secret front, but you have that with uh, SSL as well, but with several channels for, uh, for uh, the communication. So it's possible to, to have uh, parallel uh, channels of communication <laughs> in the same SSH stream. It's important. Uh, authentication is embedded inside the protocol, so it's very interesting. I will tell about it later. Uh, okay, so it was done for, uh, for the shell handling, so everything that goes around uh, terminals, uh, terminal size, uh, X11 for writing, and so on, that's embedded into the protocol. And there is also uh, dedicated uh, file transfer protocol that is a lot different from uh, FTP because it's uh, based on a binary protocol. I uh, won't go into the detail because it's a little out of time. Okay. What are you looking into a security protocol or a secure uh, transport protocol? Of course, you are looking for integrity. You do not want that someone with his laptop can uh, change something in your data stream and garbage your files or uh, inject commands into your, your shell. So a, a good thing for a transport protocol is that any tampering is detected and if possible is avoided. You look also at the availability. Availability is a resistance against uh, denial of service attacks and uh, the fact that you have the most uh, uptime as possible. So it's not possible to shut down your connection, to make it look slow, uh, to uh, stop you from connecting to your, your server and so on. Something you want as well, and I think it's uh, <laughs> the best known functionality of uh, SSH and TLS, it's a confidentiality. You don't want anyone to know what you've done on your, on your interaction on your channel. So nobody can withdraw you. And that increase that you are sure who you are speaking to. That's very important because if you are sure you are talking into a private and secure channel without anyone have dropping, but you are not actually speaking to the, the good per uh, person, it has no interest. So uh, it must be embedded into the, the security of your protocol. The most of uh, implementation of uh, SSL and SSH do the same, apply the same solution for all of these products. So integrity is, uh, is verified through strong hash maps, so it's a cryptographic mechanism that makes possible to, to verify that a packet has not been tampered with. Another problem is that if somebody uh, change a byte or a bit, flips a bit into your, uh, your stream, SSH or TLS will detect it and shut down the communication. So, so much for the availability. It's still uh, based on TCP, which is an insecure protocol. So <coughs> anybody can send an RST, anybody can send uh, a packet containing garbage, and the, uh, and the, the application running SSH or TLS will not be able to recover from uh, such a situation. So if you are looking for uh, availability, 
SSH or TLS is not your solution. Maybe you should look at uh, something run on top of IP like uh, IPsec. Okay, confidentiality. It's actually a well-known uh, problem. So strong C force, uh, a key exchange, and of course, the authentication on the key exchange. The key exchange is the way by which the server and the client agree on a common uh, symmetric key to use for the communication. And by a way or another, uh, the servers might stay. I am that server, and my proof is that I signed uh, the key exchange first. Okay. So the main goal of server authentication is to avoid the man in the middle attack. Man in the middle attack is when someone plugs right between your server and the client and they fakes the, the server. So in TLS, well, I won't go a lot in the details because I think uh, it's not really the topic right now. But uh, there are a lot of uh, difference uh, between SSH and TLS. For instance, TLS is uh, using X509 certificates, where SSH only use your key H's. So you connect for the first time on your server, and you get a uh, hash. Do you trust uh, the server to have uh, that hash with a cryptic uh, MD5 or SHA1 hash of the public key? And you say yes or no, and then it's stored on your computer and you don't need it. And you store it on a known host file, which is a big difference be between TLS, which use a trust chain to verify that the, the host is legitimate. Addition there, OpenSSH yeah. started using certificates. They're not X509 certificates, but their yeah. own certificates. Uh, yes, that's uh, right. A while back. Also, so they started implementing yeah. their own certificate at first yeah. because the they felt the need for certificates because uh, people uh, having huge farms with hundreds of servers uh, don't pa uh, take time to uh, to exchange and know those files. Uh, but uh, they have it the X509 uh, thing because they thought a lot of uh, vulnerabilities could come from uh, just parsing F509. So X509 is maintained by Ruben Pro as a separate patch out of the tree. So and the, uh, the uh, certificate support that is added in OpenSSH since a few versions back now is really much, much simpler. It's just the keys and just signatures on keys. And they intentionally did not use X509 because it's it's complicated. To yes, it's really complicated. It's, um, it's easy to make errors. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's new still, so yes, let's that's, see how it goes. That's quite crazy. Okay. Now, something that is important as well is that the server must sometimes know the identity of uh, the, the clients, and the, the guy who is tapping something on the, the keyboard. So uh, with TLS, you don't have uh, so much choice. As well, you must use uh, a certificate as well. Uh, of course, you can use a smart card with a PKC as well. But if you want, wish to use passwords, OTP, two factors, uh, and CISO, you are, uh, you are left to use the application layer, so HTTP or FTP or something else. There is nothing integrated right into TLS for that. And that's a big difference between SSH and TLS, is that in SSH, uh, everything is done inside the protocol to uh, uh, just to the uh, yeah. You can use PSK now, TLS. PSK? Yeah, Visual Key. Yes, that's interesting too. Uh, I'm not sure you can do it with this as you show it now. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so. I'm sorry if the, the diagram is not really nice. I made it in a hurry. So, uh, so that's a, a little chino of uh, the difference between SSH and TLS. Uh, in uh, SSH, you have several uh, channels that uh, can be used to communicate with uh, the server. 
and uh, each uh, channel is dedicated to a service. So for channel, for the for running, and all of the channels are protected using a uh, lot of application layer that you can use for, to authenticate the user. So you wish to, to use uh, OTP authentication, just use a uh, keyboard interactive. So uh, it's possible to, to ask for, to send a challenge to the client, and the client uh, replies using uh, the host. Uh, there's so uh, GSS API, which can be used uh, for Kerberos uh, integration. So what are you going to choose? I'd say it depends of, on your trust model. If for you a CA model is easier, if a lot of uh, people are going to use your service and there is no problem that China can forge a certificate for you, then you, uh, TLS is probably the, the best uh, protocol. I, so it's a, uh, it's a very good. The, that's uh, one use case. The, you'd use uh, SSH if you have a clear use of an asymmetrical uh, protocol. So there is a server, there is a client, they are uh, mostly the same, but there are differences in the implementation. The host authentication model is very simple. So uh, most users will just have to click on accept the first time and that's okay. Uh, yes, open SSH, you can find it uh, almost everywhere. And uh, it's, it would be a good idea to actually implement uh, SSH for the access to uh, some widely deployed uh, system services like IMAP. Why couldn't a uh, user uh, have uh, access to IMAP using all the advantages of the authentication feature of uh, SSH. So it's time to, to start the demo. Uh, I will, will have to, to hurry a little. So that's a list of uh, existing SSH library. You can see uh, the SSH is not the, the only one. Uh, Actually, I did not test all of them, and I can guarantee the whole one. But it's interesting to look at it. OK. Uh, now I will speak uh, in detail of our uh, LibSSH. So uh, it's just started like a simple uh, SSH platform concept in 2003. And uh, I started uh, putting uh, some code uh, around to, uh, to make a library for uh, SSH. And then it became uh, a little more serious. Uh, some people were contributing. Uh, Andreas, uh, which is there, uh, came uh, in 2008 and made a lot of work on the code, but also <coughs> on the infrastructure. So now uh, the SSH is around 33. Uh, thousand line of code. So it's one sort of open SSH. And it's used by some uh, free software like QDP. Okay, so interesting feature of uh, SSH is that it's client side and server side as well. So you can implement both sides of the communication. There are support for SSH2, SSH1. You can authenticate using uh, passwords, that's the most use uh, of uh, SSH, but also keyboard interactive. Uh, for instance, if you have PAM on your system, it will rely on uh, keyboard interactive. Uh, public key, uh, so if you have a public key on uh, your system, it will try to, uh, to authenticate using it. It will also uh, try to authenticate using the SSH agent, and the good thing is, is that if your SSH agent is uh, already compatible with PKCS 11, you can also authenticate using a smart card. 
Uh, okay, OpenSSL, Jet Fleet, Windows uh, Units. Okay, lots of, of basic features from uh, SSH is there. Okay, we also wrote a lot of documentation for uh, LibSSH because we felt it was really important for <coughs> library to be correctly documented. So if you want to have a look at uh, the, the API documentation and uh, the oxygen documentation is available on that URL. There is also a tutorial that uh, explains all the basic steps to get things done. But I will show you a few steps of code. Okay, there are also a lot of examples. Uh, it's not intended to be video, but that's a look on the, the main page of the tutorial. So there is an explanation on how to connect, how to uh, authenticate, how to open a remote shell, <coughs> SFTP, SCP, for writing connections or TCP for writing, how to handle trades, and you are currently writing uh, a tutorial on the server communication. Okay, we are uh, developing LibSSH uh, on our own hardware, on our own infrastructure. So we are using Git, Redmine, and uh, what's interesting, we have uh, a test panel with night bursts. So every night there is a build that is done on several targets. Uh, tests are run uh, using Valgrind uh, too. And so we get a mail each time uh, someone broke something. So uh, we can have uh, a preview. That's how it looks. So on OpenSUSE, FreeBSD, CentOS, uh, now we have uh, Windows as well. And uh, we get a lot of uh, bugs fixed just by using this and getting the, the bugs reported by it. So it's very, very interesting. Another thing that is interesting is the coverage of the, the test. So all the tests uh, cover some part of the code. Right now you can see it's still arranged because we only have 30% like, of the code that is uh, correctly tested. But we only started uh, one or two years ago to, to do some uh, systematic testing. So it's not that bad. OK, so now the details of uh, the coverage. OK. Uh, that's an example of uh, how to connect to SSH. Actually, it's pretty uh, straightforward. So you just uh, create an object for the decision. You just tell, I want to connect to localhost, I want to use uh, the, the login Paris I connect, and then I check the return code to see if the connection was successful or not. Okay, then I need to check if the server is known. So just like on OpenSSH, when you connect to your host, you get uh, an error message if you are going to, to connect to a server with key exchange. That's the same, you just get a narrow code that tells uh, what the status of the host in the known host file. So, server known, okay, everything is good, if the host is known. Server known changed, that means the, the key changed, that's very bad. Uh, server from the order, that means uh, the server advertised a DSC key, for instance, but you only know the RSC key. Uh, find not found and server not known means that's the first time you connect to the server or that you are using uh, SSH at all. And in that case, you just have to update the, the file. So, question? Yes? Is first? it using the OpenSSH known host file? The same format and the same Yes, same file. format. Parse same file. Parsing it the same way, we parse also the, the configuration file from SSH. It's not complete, but we are, well, I say, uh, 70 uh, persons. Uh, no. no. No? Maybe 30 persons. And 30 persons? Uh, <laughs> I'm optimistic. Okay. <laughs> no, you need to, to authenticate. Uh, well, there is uh, an interesting code that does everything for you is uh, user auto pop key, which uh, simply uh, try 
all the, the public keys in your repository and, uh, and we'll try to, to connect to them. Uh, if you still need to uh, connect using the password, there is a straightforward uh, password uh, authentication code. But of course, there are a lot of um, uh, more. Yes, I will go. I will hurry. There are a lot of other uh, codes that can be made for lower level authentication. Okay, mm -hmm. now you want to just uh, execute something on a channel. But you have to uh, create a channel to open it. So you have to ask the server if you can access it. <coughs> Normally, you should uh, look at the error code each time you do uh, SSH code, of course. But here, the, it was stripped down for the, the example. So you just request an execution of the command, and then you read the, verbs, the response. And when you are done, you close the channel. So pretty straightforward. Now, what we are looking for the future, we are planning to, to become a 100% uh, uh, SSH library. So we want to implement 100% uh, un of the SSH protocol. That's not uh, the case uh, by now. We want to be fully in sequence um, code based. Right now, a lot of work has been made in that direction, but it's not really yet. So we want an um, overlocking API. It will probably be ready in uh, a month or two. OK, I would like to, uh, to go into other languages, but still some uh, work to do. Uh, PKCS 11 is a hot topic because uh, we are here just to speak on PKCS 11. Right now, you can use LibSSH with uh, PKCS 11 for uh, using the SSH agent, but the, the support will be ready in one month or two after. Okay, and of course, we have some work to do on the SSH part, uh, server part of uh, LibSSH. Okay, I'm just in time. Uh, I don't know if there are some questions. Yes? Is it a server or client side? Uh, both. both. So the, the client side API is more evolved than the server part <laughs> API. But as far as I know, uh, LibSSH is the only uh, SSH library that does the uh, server part. Yes. Why uh, did you implement it as a separate project from OpenSSH, taking the library out of OpenSSH uh, slowly? Probably the not invented here syndrome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. I, our comment to that is that the OpenSSH code base is is not really well. You could you could make a library out of it, I guess, but it's not made as a library. It was not, it's not the same concept. The, the concept in a library is that you have, you must have an external API to access to the, the whole elements, while in uh, OpenSSH everything is done to, to work inside OpenSSH. So it's not really the, the same. Uh, maybe we could share 50% uh, of the code, but not that much. I have a question. Uh, which is the most uh, widespread uh, user of LibSSH? The KDE project. So oh. if you are uh, using uh, KDE on a SUSE or also Ubuntu and uh, access uh, using Dolphin uh, SFTP folder somewhere on the server, you are using uh, LibSSH as a backend. Okay, that's actually, it, it was a trick question because I, I think I once shared a view that there was a document that said that LibSSH is the most used client for some botnet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. So the most... Uh, we have the market leader there. <laughs> <laughs> we want to start somewhere. <laughs> that's right. No hanging fruit. So. Okay, time is up. Thank you. Thank you.